Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Sulky, express yourself with sulky and create with confidence. Brother, it's so easy with brother at your side. Quilt Cut, easy fabric cutting for quilters. And The Warm Company, inspiring products for creative people. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community. I'm Mary-Kate Carpetris, and with me again is Patrick Lowe's, our special guest for this 12-part series. And today, Patrick's going to show us how to do a bias binding. So, Patrick, what, what do you have here to show us? I have a project that's going to have to have a bias binding I because it's, it's completely round. Usually, mm -hmm. if you have to do a curved edge or round projects, you have to use bias binding. And what that is, for those of you that don't know what bias binding is, it differs from straight grain binding because you're cutting on the bias of the fabric. And if you don't know what that is, the the width of the fabric and the length of the fabric is your straight grain. Mm -hmm. um, if you cut at a 45 degree angle to that, that's called the bias of the grain. And that makes your bias strips that you cut more, uh, they stretch more right. and they give and have mm -hmm. some ease. So you don't have puckers all the way around right. the outer edge. Um, this project is called Sunny Side Up. It's from my pattern line. Um, and it's a sunflower design. You can mm -hmm. see it's already been uh, satin stitched and all the quilting is done. It's just ready for its binding. This is a 20 inch uh, diameter table topper. There's also a 15 inch uh, placemat that comes in the pattern. Um, but I, I brought this because I thought it would be a good project to, to show how to do the binding. Mm -hmm. Now the first thing that you have to consider and the, the equation for calculating the amount of, of binding that you need is a little bit daunting to beginning quilters. It's not hard though. It's not. It's really not. Once it, you get it a hang of worse it, than it I, right. is. Yeah, its bark is worse than its bite. Uh -huh. um, what you need to do is to measure the circumference of the finished piece. So I would take a tape measure and measure mm -hmm. around this. Um, once I find the circumference, my bindings are usually two and a quarter right. inches wide. So you're going to multiply the circumference of your finished piece mm -hmm. by the width of your binding. So say this was 100 inches, it would be multiplied by 2.25. Mm -hmm. um, that figures the, the area right. um, of the, the amount of binding that you need to cut to cover this. Um, then to actually find out the, the size of the square, you're going to get your calculator out. I do everything with a calculator. And, and that's Even what makes the most this basic so easy. Arithmetic. Yeah. You just hit the square root button to yes. find the square root of that number because that will tell you the size of the square that you need to cut the binding from. Now, if say it came out 14.35, there's some long decimal yes. after that, you're going to round up to 15 inches. Okay. So that's what we've done today. We've got a 15 inch square already cut that we're going, going to cut this binding from. Now, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to believe that you can get all the binding that you would need from that from this small square, but it can be done. Yeah. And you actually end up with a little bit of extra. So what I'm going to do first is get my transparent gridded acrylic ruler and uh, I'm going to just lay the ruler from upper left to lower right on the diagonal from the corners and just carefully cut a diagonal line to separate two triangle halves of that square. The next thing, th this is all very visual for me and when I teach this I usually have my students stand behind me so they can see what right. I'm doing because if you sort of burn it into your memory it's a lot easier. We're going to take the left side and right sides together, we're going to lay them one atop the other and overlapping mm -hmm. at the top and the bottom by just about a quarter of an inch mm -hmm. because we're going to make a seam, a quarter inch seam along here and we need that to overlap so that when it's unfolded it's even. And I've already got that done also, so let's set this aside. And I have in the past, not that this has happened to me very often, but if you don't offset those corners just right, when you open it up you'll, you'll see that it's not square and right. you have a chance to take it out and readjust it if necessary and oh, learn sure. how to do it. Sure. It, it, it just makes a, a right angle, well not a right angle, but a, a clean corner right. there. Um, and we could actually cut that little bit off, but we don't need to. Mm -hmm. Okay, and like I said, I usually use two and a quarter inch binding. So the next step, and I'm going to move this up a little bit, maybe you can see that better. We're going to line the ruler up with the raw edge of the fabric at the two and a quarter inch line right there. Mm -hmm. Now, don't make the mistake of picking up the rotary cutter and 
because I've done that. <laughs> uh, what you need to do is mark this line. Because the great thing about making the binding this way is that you don't have a bunch of strips to work with. Um, these strips, this is going to be, when we're finished, one long strip mm -hmm. when we cut it. So, okay, let's see, there's two and a quarter again. The effect of it kind of reminds me of trying to peel an orange all in one continuous. Strip. That's exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, and we should be able to get one more two and a quarter inch spaced line. And this then, because it's not two and a quarter inches, is going to be extra. We're just going to go ahead and cut that away now because okay. we don't need it and it will just mess up the, the you know, stitching this all together. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the hardest part, um, okay. I think. And again, it's, it's such a visual thing that it's hard to, like I, I have instructions on my website that you can find uh, to do this and there are illustrations but it's so much better to see it mm -hmm. actually happen. So we're going to look at this with the uh, wrong side of the fabric down. We're going to bring the two ends together, starting with the bottom and the top. We're just going to pull them together like this. And you see how those lines match up mm -hmm. right here? We want to offset those by one line. All right. So you see how that? Uh -huh. Now, we want to go a little bit further than that, actually, because we're going to stitch this seam. So we need these lines to intersect at the same place where a quarter inch seam is going to fall. So actually, uh -huh. yeah, I don't know if you, if you can see that on I camera, can, but, yeah. but yeah, we're, we're just going to make, make the lines crisscross. You can see just a little crisscross, uh -huh. right. Okay, and I am not a pinner. My friend Sharon always tells me pinners are winners, so I must be a loser. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's... So do you have any tips for you know, dealing with it on the bias so it doesn't stretch? It, it, well, this part of it isn't on the bias. This seam oh, right. will not be on the bias because we've cut across the straight. So it's not so bad. Um, you know, if I had some pins here, I'd go ahead and pin it. But honestly, it's, it's very simple to just, it's a quick, short seam, and I can show you. I've done it a million times, too. Okay. So. And I do, um, you know, back stitch at the beginning and end to make sure that it stays stitched. And I tend to sew fast. Yeah, also. you are fast. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I like to always be on to the next project. <laughs> but you're still adjusting your fabric a little bit. You're not just oh, going yeah. well, pedal yeah. to the metal. No, you no, know. no. I'll do that Look. when I sew the binding Good. on. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so okay. now, thank you. Now I can show you how, see how they matched up? Mm -hmm. Even though I, mm -hmm. I didn't pin, but and I just, Perfect. I knew how much to overlap those to make that work. Now, the next thing to do is just to press this seam open. We don't actually have to do that, but I'm gonna give it a quick press. Okay. Okay, that's quick and simple. And now the last thing that we have to do is just to cut our strip. And I think you can tell by looking at it that I'm going to start cutting here and I'm going to end here and that's going to all be one, okay. one long strip. But again, don't go for the rotary cutter for this stuff. No. A good sharp pair of scissors. Don't want to use your paper scissors on this. And if it's a little jagged, it's okay too because those are going to be the raw edges of your binding. Mm -hmm. So they'll be mm -hmm. completely encased in the binding. Just about there. Mm You can get the idea now that this is a very long stretch of binding that was yeah. very easy to make out of a small, I mean, for this one, you could That's use amazing. a fat quarter. You know? Yeah. But there's your entire length Voila. of binding.
Okay, so we have the binding all pressed, uh, raw edges together, mm -hmm. and those are the raw edges that we're going to align with the raw edges of the finished table topper. Mm -hmm. um, when I do this, I, I always start about 8 to 10 inches in okay. from the end of the binding. That's just to leave our, uh, our, our be so that we can piece them together beginning and end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, once again, I'm not using a I pins. noticed. <laughs> um, don't try this at home. Uh, actually, most people would pin this because it's a curved edge. Yeah. I've done miles and miles of bias binding, and I think it'd be easier for you to see if the pins aren't in the way. So I'm stitching this on at a, um, a quarter of an inch is how I usually do uh, the bias binding. And the other thing that I do want to say is that you don't want to be pulling on the binding edge. You don't want to stretch it to fit. Mm -hmm. You just want it to, um, to ease it onto the curved edge. And you can see how I sort of place it with my fingers. Okay, now as I near the end, I want to be uh, conscious of the fact that I need to leave a tail at the end also. And we've actually got plenty of binding here to mm -hmm. do that. So, I'm going to stitch through until I get the ends a little bit closer together. And then I'm going to stop cut my thread and I don't want to back stitch there because I'm actually going to be ripping this out a little bit. Okay. On, on a bias binding it's important that you bring the ends fairly close to meeting. If I want my, uh, my binding seam to be here, say, I'm going to go ahead and cut the binding at that point. And then because my binding is two and a quarter inches wide, I want to overlap the tail over the beginning by two and a quarter inches, and I don't use rulers much either. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but I, I can tell that this is about two and a quarter inches. Then I'm going to cheat back a little bit because I bias binding stretches and it has mm -hmm. some give to it. Mm -hmm. So I want to make it just a little bit less than the two and a quarter okay. inches. So I'm going to go ahead and because otherwise does it just kind of bag up or you'd get, get a pucker there. Yeah. Okay. Now you can also see that. Because I've sewn so close together, I'm not going to be able to uh, do my overlap and, and make those ends meet. So I'm going to have to tear back a little bit. My God. I know you hate that. <laughs> but <laughs> it doesn't. It's so dramatic sounding. If you do it fast, you're not, you're not going to tear the fabric. Um, and it, do, it really does make for a better fit if you do it this way. So now, again, this is a very visual thing that, that I had to do several times. Uh, you know, to make it work, the right side, or I'm sorry, the left side of the binding is going to be wrong side of fabric down. Okay. The right side is going to be the right side of the fabric down, and you're going to lay those on top of each other. We need to fold that so that we have some uh, play in the fabric. And then just like piecing any other binding strips, we're going to stitch at a 45 degree angle to the corners. Okay. I'm going to remove my little attachment there. And then before cutting anything, make sure you can tell that's going to fit. Mm -hmm. See, And we're just going to cut away the, the seam allowance. And I would just, uh, you know, sort of finger press mm 
mm -hmm. that seam open. And then we're going to continue sewing around just to finish it off. that mm -hmm. got caught in there. But there that's, that's basically all there is to it. I always then, uh, you know, press the binding out away from center just to, to get a nice uh, smooth seam there. Mm -hmm. And then bias binding, all you have to do is basically roll it over the edge and it just falls right where it needs nice. to be. Yeah. And then you just press it and, and sew that by hand. I don't think we need to do all of that. I think you get the idea. Right, but right. Just finish it however you would finish it. Some people might finish it by machine or, or, or by, by hand, hand or yeah. whatever works Definitely. for you. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. And with that, we hope you feel much better about doing a bias binding next time that project presents itself to you. Thanks so much. Quilters Newsletter TV, the quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Sulky, express yourself with sulky and create with confidence. Brother, it's so easy with brother at your side. Quilt Cut. Easy fabric cutting for quilters. And The Warm Company, inspiring products for creative people.